you're in sigil. Oh, freaks. Marinade. <laughs> Jeff. Meat soup. <laughs> I am Spider Man's face. <laughs> I am Terrence. Well, like I was saying before, the slice of life anime is basically the same in America as the true crime podcast. They're the same genre. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't pull that off. No, no it's not just come from that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm no. not going to weigh in. I've already given my opinion on slice of life anime and anime in general on this show. Yeah, well, you're nauseum. incredibly biased. Also, and that's never stopped you before. There's <laughs> well, I'm, just... I'm I'm learning some self control. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> or crippling stomach pains. That's the help with that. Whatever. <laughs> so, so we now know what happens every time he has to like. I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be right yeah. back. The meat soup is just <laughs> running right through me. The chicken is trying to escape in a big way. Well, for those who aren't <laughs> us, <laughs> us, you have no idea what we're talking about. Frank's marinated his chicken and then uses the, the marinade <laughs> to make to make his sauce for his dish when he cooks the chicken. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> you That's only the that first part of it. You haven't tried it. No, it's just, you don't do that. <laughs> I am not wasting pineapple juice, soy sauce, you and teriyaki. It need to reevaluate wasted. some things. It wasn't wasted. It was a delicious marinade. It served its purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but if I could repurpose it into the sauce, it did is integral. Thing. Don't make it do another thing. <laughs> it's got to do two things. There's if frugal and then there's dangerous. <laughs> hey. Tomato. I got no tomato. I got, Don't throw away that tomato, by the way. I got a sauce. <laughs> oh, I have God. no defense to that. Uh, oh. But now I'm thinking that perhaps I should just use a, a smaller amount of marinade. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. I was planning, you know, I just dumped the bag, the Ziploc bag <laughs> that I marinate my chicken in into a pot and Wait. bring it to boil. Wait. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, boil? boil your... <laughs> no, 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 no. The chicken is separate from the sauce. I boil the sauce independently to get rid of the salmonella that is accrued <laughs> from sitting in the chicken. <laughs> Oh, my Lanta. <laughs> I was going to say, do you rinse that bag out and save it? Reuse it. Rinse it? Why? I just use it. Well, what, what I'm actually surprised is, is when he's uh, soaking it, why, uh, you know, like after he gets done soaking it, pulls the chicken out and puts <sighs> another chicken in there and uses the same bag with the sauce in it. Over like a cup, like five days. <clears throat> it's four times. I use well, the know, same bag about four times <laughs> before I throw it away. And then right before he throws it away, he mixes in like a cup of uh, warm water and gets <laughs> a straw. Shakes it up. <laughs> oh, I gotta <laughs> add some other things in it. I can't just drink smooth. soy sauce. <laughs> I did picture him as somebody who reaches in and pulls the raw chicken out of the bag and puts it in the pan and then. Fingers <laughs> to get to, to taste real quick, and then stupidly goes, "Oh yeah, salmonella. I should boil this before I eat it." No, so, throw it away. I've had to stop myself from actually licking my fingers after. Oh, he'd be all right. He'll just stick his hands How under the bowl and hot water. Mm. We've I often mean, there's, asked. There's people that say, you know, you should eat your food raw. Yeah, but they're, I think they're talking about vegetables. Um, <laughs> they're all dead. <laughs> right, or, that it, or that idiot, the liver king, who, oh my God, surprise, surprise, he was Steroids. juicing the time. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what? Are, are that un- really... mus- muscular guy was juicing? <gasps> <sighs> nope, just pure primal living. <laughs> Get this off from chicken titties. <laughs> <laughs> no, his was eating raw liver. And shooting heroin. Directly into his butt cheek. <sighs> like, how do people fall for grifts like this? I'll never understand. <laughs> We're gullible. Mm-hmm. Yes, I don't know. People just want to be fooled. I think sometimes. Uh-huh. 
just want it to be true so bad. I don't get me wrong. I want weight loss to be easy, but I've never actually terribly been terribly fooled by diet. Yeah. <laughs> I never did try that pill that just made you shit yourself. That was uh, <laughs> I remember that cut. From. No, the uh, the gas with oily discharge weight loss pill. Uh, <laughs> oh. Ah. Oh, that was that was the I can't remember the name of the actual pill, but in the commercial, you know, it's the the happy people losing weight, and oh. then it you get your list of here's all the fucked up shit that's gonna happen to your body since it can't absorb fat anymore. Yeah, we're and, a man uh, pond. <laughs> some users may experience gas with oily discharge, and then it tries to move on, and I was always like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's so, finger let's back to that to that line real quick. <laughs> Elaborate, please. Yeah. Oh. oh, you don't know when this happens. Just, yeah. like, I fart a lot during a day. <laughs> Gotta uh, use the if, Bernie Sanders finger wagging gif. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I never make sure that I'm in a safe location to pass a little gas, but if I have to worry about a bunch of oil slipping out of my butthole, <laughs> I don't know if that feels for me. Oh my God, there's a doo doo stick in the drawers. <laughs> what was that, Mahogany? I said, just slip sliding away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I play solitaire app on my phone whenever I'm doing my laundry or waiting to start my porn. day. And um, every time I end a game, before I start a new game, there's an ad, usually 30, 15, 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. Recently, there's been this long running stretch of three minute unskippable ads for Oprah's weight loss gummies <laughs> when you burn fat while you sleep. So sick of seeing that ad <laughs> because not only is it un- a three minute unskippable ad, the volume of that ad jumps up like 10 decibels. Oh, they do that everywhere. Like every, every radio station, every TV station, every everything. <laughs> cranks the volume on ads well when i was uh working at the radio station my f- my first gig was uh where i got to produce was i would go to shows and after the shows sometimes during the shows i would shove a microphone in the drunk people's face and, and ask them you know what they thought of the band um, i remember that gimmick yeah it was called i heard they suck live and the, the gimmick was is that they actually didn't and everybody would talk good about them and i just ended up talking to a lot of drunk people <laughs> my first one I'd never produced anything before and uh and Amy goes you need like a hard like you know something to get their attention at the start of the of the segment so that they're not you know if they're mid conversation or something they'll stop and and tune into what you're what you're doing real quick <laughs> and my shit wasn't subtle at all bum 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 she was like, that's, a, that's a bit much. <laughs> well, it's an attention getter. Yeah, well, they're looking. She's like, not that they're looking. To, they're not looking for good reasons now. You know uh, what you should have done? You should have just carried a gong. Yeah, and then hit the gong with the microphone, and then put oh. the microphone in their face. Oh, that sounds painful. awful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Now Christ. that was fun. And then the, the morning guy who who's passed away. Since then, he wanted me to be the guy out on the street that like hassled people, you know. And I wanted to do it. Thought he was Howard Stern. Yeah, he wanted me to be out there, basically attempting to get beat up every morning for his <laughs> show. And I wouldn't do it, so he never talked to me again. And then he died. They were like, <laughs> "I'm so sorry," you know. Tom Bolt died, and I was like, "I'm not." Yeah, like a shitty guy. Terrible dude. His death has not changed the fact that he was a real dick to me uh, when he was alive. <laughs> <sighs> uh, oh my gosh! So uh, there, I don't think I heard anyone with anything good to say about him. <laughs> he was a real asshole. Cool. Cool. Just riding oh. the old. I'm a radio DJ. He's where I got the get out your dollar bills and holler if you're horny because uh, <laughs> radio personalities around here even back then definitely didn't make a whole lot of money. So his second job was he was a strip club DJ. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Terrence, what was that laugh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just I've seen a picture of him. Like there's this. He's like anti horniness aura. <laughs> Yeah, he looks like a strip club DJ. Yeah, I was about to say, have you seen many strip club DJs? They're there because they can't 
see naked women otherwise. He wore a kilt so that people would have to ask him about his kilt so he'd have something to talk about. Ah, he clothing those... in lieu of personality. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, clothing as a trap to be abused by the personality. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I was uh, first moved out into my own and was able to like make all my own choices, I came to realize I didn't have much of a personality myself, so I attempted the outrageous clothing in lieu of personality. Um, still didn't work. Well, well, People could see right your feather that. Blow boas and giant hats. It was it was velour tiger stripe bowling shirts. Holy! <laughs> Not even joking. <laughs> we uh, I had, need pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have been asking all my old companions and friends to send me any of the pictures from back then, and they were like, nobody took pictures of you. <laughs> oh, they did. <laughs> They didn't save them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the uh, the loudness of the clothing yeah. overexposed the pictures. Mm. Oh. <laughs> That's good. Tri trilby hats, <laughs> handcrafted deer antler cane <laughs> that I carried with me. Oh no, you were oh you were that guy. I was that guy, yes. Oh. I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> I, I had a, a hand carved cane with a deer antler handle that a guy who made those made it for me. It cost me 75 bucks. <laughs> um, I, some people can pull off a cool cane. I think I met Satan once. Uh, <laughs> and that guy had a cane. I mean, you know, if you're Satan, you may as well. Yeah, I was... Uh, I was going to see Stained at did some Daniel Island thing with um, my friend Caroline, and we pulled up in this weird back parking lot because we got there late, so we had to do the, the park in a weird place and walk pretty far. <laughs> and out of the woods, this old dude showed up when he had a cane that had, like, snakes and shit carved on it. And he just goes, you guys want to see a magic trick? And we were like, Yeah. <laughs> And he did magic for four minutes. And he said, all right, y'all have a good day. And then he walked back into the woods. <laughs> what he was waiting for was for you to say, can you teach me? And he would say, for a price. For a price. Uh, <laughs> I think he just got lost and he meant to come out of the crossroads, but now he just felt a little embarrassed. Oh, like, oh, uh, well, there's a strange oh, couple there. Magic. <laughs> we should, uh, let me show him some magic. <laughs> They won't tell this story 20 years later. Wrong. <laughs> we got your number, Satan. We're watching you. Yeah, likable guy. Decent position. <laughs> <just, laughs> you have to be in that kind of profession. <laughs> like, I think it requires, it, it attracts a certain type. <laughs> yeah. The devil. Likable guy. Decent magician. Affable Lord of Lies. <laughs> <laughs> he got a kindly face and a scary cane. Goatee, not as pointed as you'd think. Seems like the back of a book. On the back page to get people to buy it. Somebody buy that he, book. He had a a kind face and a scary cane. Yeah. Yeah. I'd buy that book. Oh, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm currently listening again through the Driz Duerden R.A. Salvatore books. Um, I turned it on and 20 minutes into it, I was unconscious. So I'm oh, like, those fight scenes will get you out. This wasn't even a fight scene. They, they were just walking. <laughs> and, sounds uh, delightful. It was perfect. It's exactly what I need for my pre-sleep audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> pre-sleep. My immediately immediately go to sleep audiobook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My let me tune out the sounds of the ghetto oh. audiobook. I listen to a Miss Marple audiobook. <laughs> I grew up with a TV in the room. It's like I have to fall asleep with the TV on. I I can't just lay there in darkness. Even with an Bunch audio book, my mind still runs wild. And have uh, sleep. It's just like even with a like. I guess Jesse must have fell asleep like minutes after he turned on whatever it is that woke me up. It, it was an anime. Oh, as much, uh, as, as much as I don't want to talk about it, but it's such a stupid premise. 
uh, about this guy and this girl that get switched at birth, and then for some reason they get have to be engaged after they find out the truth. And a couple of cuckoos. Yeah, I guess it's um, it's what? decent. I guess, I'm like, is is it most, loud? <laughs> it's not loud, really. It's bright. It's bright. There's a lot it's, of, uh, you know, not very tense personal drama. <laughs> yeah, very low stakes. Yeah, it's extremely fell low into stakes the trap. Show. <laughs> I didn't lay that trap. Terrence I know set that trap on its own. But yeah, do not recommend. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I thought it was very heartwarming. You didn't watch it all the way through. Uh, I did watch it all the way through. I let it play all the way through. I just... The whole series? 24 episodes, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, just good. Just like, I was too lazy to get up. For 24 episodes? Well, yeah, that's you know, 12 was... hours. You know, almost 12 hours. <laughs> I might have skipped a few episodes while falling back asleep, but mm. uh, it doesn't seem to change much between episodes after the initial cast is introduced. Um, so, yeah. I mean, you, you probably missed the number one ranking uh, student and him had a rivalry. And no, I she saw would that only part. go out with him if he beat her 10 no, times. I saw, yeah, I saw mm. that part. Oh, okay. Yeah. You didn't make any time for those three episodes of Willow that are out, huh? No, I totally forgot. Mm. Also, Jesse was sleeping on the controller. That is really the main reason why I couldn't turn it off. Move. <laughs> why are you so nice to your husband and so mean to the rest of us? Because mm. someone has to absorb that blow. <laughs> With the his rest anus. of the world. <laughs> <sighs> Takes out his aggression on the entirety of humanity. I I'm not good at internalizing anger, but I can dam it up for a while. Mm. <laughs> Redirect? Yes. <laughs> comes in one end, comes out at you. You're the what? hydroelectric what? energy force of emotion. <laughs> the Hoover Dam of anger. <sighs> yep, my house is entirely powered by it. Okay, so where do we live off? <laughs> I was hoping I would remember through all this this banter, but uh, I don't. We're in okay. sigil. I know we're in yeah, sigil. We got into sigil. That's and exactly we where we were left. Very off. little. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Made it to sigil. We did episode one hundred. Now we're just you know regular old one hundred and one. Yep. Now you're gonna learn a lesson. What's that? It's a college I don't know. Course one hundred and one. Yeah. If I can. <laughs> what it sounds like when the guy brings a metal cup with ice in it to a uh, audio recording <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't uh, wear earphones i've been doing it uh this yeah, long we, we've noticed it's part of our audio scape now it's 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 a it's a raiders of the lark trope now mm. see the echoing yeah. feedback yeah. yeah the echoing feedback the uh the the, <laughs> the clanking glasses the me telling <sighs> Incredibly not landy jokes. Um, you grossing us out somehow every fucking week. I don't get it. Was that a general you or was that directed at Frakes and his it was marinade specifically sauce? directed at Frakes? <laughs> oh, the marinade sauce. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I was like, how did I fucking gross you out this week? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Duck dicks break off. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're in uh, sigil. Yeah, you're in sigil. Stuff happens. Uh, there's a fight, and um, see you next session. No, ah. Uh. Oh, last time we ended up in sigil. <laughs> yeah, that was the end. Yeah. Okay. So you arrive in a filthy back alley of sigil after saying goodbye to Marcus, the man cat, cat man, whatever. Mm. The, the the middle aged man do. the middle aged cat boy. He looks like someone who would listen to that song for sure, hmm? and That's sing fun. it out loud. Cat man do. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. It's a song. Yes. Cat man do. I thought it was is a that, city. Is that Bob Seger? No, it might be Bob Seger. Who knows what Bob Seger sings? 
I grew up moves. around a lot of drugs. I don't. I don't I'm not know. 70. I don't know anything. Any Bob Seger songs? <laughs> Just movie references from before that time. <laughs> I, I'm a cinephile. I'm not an audiophile. It's different. I know. It is Bob Seger. Mm. All right. It is Cat Stevens. <laughs> Good. Huh? Cat Stevens also saying Cat Mandu. No, he's saying Calf Mandu. That's song. the same word. Yeah. Well, Bob Seger misspelled it then. Because it's just spelled Cat Mandu. How many times can we say Cat Mandu? I don't know. I'm, I'm just letting you do it. <laughs> Stop letting this happen. <laughs> Sorry. It's a Nepalese city. Uh, God, why'd you have to go there? I hate it when people say Nepalese. Well, how do you say? It sounds so Nepal? dirty. <laughs> I mean, only you if you mispronounce nipple. Yeah. Weirdo. <laughs> she said nipple. <laughs> Quick, give me a tug on my nipples. <laughs> no. No. This pinched my Nepalese. Anyway, um, <laughs> so you arrive in a filthy back alley. And so after saying goodbye to Marcus, the, the middle-aged cat boy, you are on your own here in the city of doors, looking in every direction, the city curving out and up and all on all sides. Oh, I remember where we left it. Jeff was in the process of saying he was going to cast Ears of the City. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to ask for specifics whenever you That them. never came out of my mouth. Yeah. Was it the last city then? That must have been the last mm-hmm. city. That was like eight episodes ago when we were actually yeah. in another city. I've never done that here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, on this character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me clarify. <laughs> Let me gee this butter. Um... I guess we need to inquisit and find where we need to go. We're, we're heading home. Yes, that's our plan. As far as I know, that is your plan. Well, I was I was trying to be in character to ask the rest of the party. Oh. Nope. Yes. Nobody has, <laughs> nobody has anything else in sigil that they want to accomplish. I mean, yes. this is the first time any of us have seen this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This yeah. is like the most hopping, happening place in the universe. It has connections to everywhere else. Mm. I feel like uh, my character would be a bit overwhelmed. Your character feels a bit overwhelmed and disconnected. This yeah. place has almost mm. no natural biorhythm other than the sentience that live here. The ground beneath your feet, it does not thrum with the uh, the hum of uh, underground life that the, a, a typical forest or even a city has. There's Everything here is dry. Everything here is manufactured. Everything here is uh, ec- imported from somewhere else. The only plant life you see is a sort of um, a, a grayish, blackish looking creeper that hangs off some structures. Uh, the leaves are heart-shaped, but you can see that they are also incredibly hard and sharp on the edge. And it's not a not a good first impression for me, I'd say. We were we were hunting for vile people who had nearly destroyed a town, and I'm also a bit. Uh, Curious. I'd like to get back and see if there's anything I could do to uh, dissuade that group of blighter druids from continuing their work. I don't know what someone like me would do in a place like this. The the streets yeah. before just uh, the street before you while you guys are chit chatting. Um, it's not filled. It's not super busy, but there is a, a small amount of traffic here in this in this um, darker alcove of the city or that you've entered. Um, another person teleports or transports in from the stone arch that you guys step through. Uh, a person like just covered in like uh, cuts and bruises, 
uh, with blood trickling out their nose. They seem overwhelmingly relieved to finally be in the city. They take a deep breath of the air. And he's like, and like oh, finally. Uh, and begin um, and hoof it out of the street past. Wait, wait, uh, hang on, hang on. I ain't got no money. He turns around. No money. I will offer to heal you with it for free. Uh, out free. of the goodness of my heart. What's your you seem, angle? You seem incredibly <laughs> wounded. Yeah. I, I Apparently, the- some idiot walked through the portal there and riled up the crowd with some sort of bloody music. And whenever he left, whatever spell he cast on him broke, and they got real mad. Oh, well, then you'd be happy to know that this man here owes you this healing already, then. (laughs) (laughs) What kind of monster would do such a thing? (laughs) He's like, he suspiciously slowly walks up to you and says, all right, then. But if I think you're casting something dangerous, if you're trying to curse me, I I have my ways. He I pull out the, the wand of cure light wounds. And... See? <laughs> Great. A stick. <laughs> yes, a stick. And you get back. Oh, wow, that's nine hit points that's max healing oh okay um yeah you see his superficial wounds begin to close up and you know the his suspicious face softens a little bit and then he says well thank you friend and then he backs away while looking looking at you the whole time until he disappears around a building and you wait your like, bill i forgot to give you your bill <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't worry it is itemized the clop 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 of footfalls as he runs away Hurry up! The mark is leaving! Eagerly, his wallet! Oh. <laughs> Eagle comes back just carrying the whole pants. Um, <laughs> base pants. <laughs> base pants? Uh, so, yes. But the street the sky is running down is like moderately is somewhat busy. Like It's got like a few carts going down. It's got some foot traffic. This place... This part of town, you're guessing, is not that great. Everyone seems to have the strange, stra- same strange, suspicious air about them. Mm. Look at which way this seems to be the flow of traffic. Uh, mm. It seems to be coming from both ways, but mostly it seems to be coming from, um, I guess, the left. <laughs> no. I'm kind of thinking like, you know, like when you go into the... Um, going into any major city and stuff, the flow of traffic, you can kind of notice the main routes. You'll see people going back and forth on the main routes. and Not Jacksonville. <laughs> you see more people coming from the left, but they are less uh, energetic. It looks like mostly workers coming home from uh, a long day. Does there seem to be a place uh, a going towards center? a marketplace? Let's see. Uh, guess I guess you're gonna have to ask directions. So give me a, a diplomacy to gather information. Jeff oh, cast this. ears of the city. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that there's a marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> I do not assist. I assist. What we're assisting, Jeff. I am. Oh, no, 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 no. Someone else is the better yeah, dip- no, diplomat. Assist, assist oh, okay. me. Assist sure. me. What I get is a, he? I, well, I mean, I've only got a plus six, but uh, hmm. I guess we had. Hmm. But, but to gather information I, is a plus I seven. I do assist. And I rolled a 15, so I'm at 22 before they help. All right. I have um, my kindly old man face. <clears> oh. <throat> So yeah, you uh, you do all right. You um, you ask some uh, some some pointed uh, questions. You manage to not look like a completely rube, a complete rube. <laughs> Which you can tell people here kind of got their eyes peeled for suckers. Yeah. Yes, everyone here seems to be just very interested in finding suckers. Um, they tell you that they are in fact on the you. You are, in fact, uh, not that far from the market ward. But, but they turn back, they, they thumb back over the shoulder. However, you're going to ha- have to go through mo- back, th- back through the hive if you want the fastest way or through <laughs> the long way through the city to get 
back around. You, they tell you you are in the, the lower ward. Mm. <clears throat> Do we want to sightsee the city, take in the the monuments and architecture? Actually, that's not a bad idea. Um, if he uh, and just uh, let me just run this by by real quick. Um, <laughs> first of all, I hear hive, and I'm thinking, okay, worst part of the city, obviously. Yeah, it is indeed um, the worst part of the city. That's it, from, from the context clues, yes, worst part of the city. <laughs> Were the and, words scum and villainy thrown yeah. in there? Indeed. Yeah. But my idea is let's take the roundabout way. As we're going, kind of pick up on people's conversations, maybe with perception checks, to kind of hear, get a feel with the different areas. People, you know, haven't, you know, conversing about, oh, yeah, let's go over here, blah, 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 and kind of kind of get a feel for what's going on where without trying to look like rubes by asking, hey, where can I go to go pick up blah, blah, blah? All right. Listening Actually, out I, tips. I think I might be looking at the map wrong. You are exactly on the opposite side of the <laughs> of the city from the, uh, from the uh, market ward. My bad. But either way, you can avoid the hive or take the slightly longer way toward the mar- market mm-hmm. ward. Keep our eye out for crepe shops and boba tea huts. Slightly longer way, please. Mm-hmm. All right. So from the edge of the hive into the lower ward. Um, here you see that there are um, a, a lot of, well, as you guys are doing your traveling, a lot of well-established kind of uh, industrial outfits here. Uh, like you can see that this 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 part of the city is, in addition to being the norm the normal kind of gloom that the the grayish buildings kind of cast over everything. There is indeed a haze of soot in the air here. Uh, as you approach the foundry district, you pass. Let's see. Um, you pass what appears to be a a massive temple that is in ruins but still busy uh, <laughs> as you go by finally you get to the place where the um, there is a lot of like industrial businesses this is uh, the the foundry district according to the information you got but by the time you guys reach the foundry district you uh, are have been accosted by at least two or three uh, lantern wielding uh, for the urchins, I guess is the best <laughs> way to describe them. Offering to be tour guides, city guides, anything you need. They can help you find portals. They can help you help you do anything you're looking for, friend. For the right price. You can strike out on your own, or you can take advantage of one of these touts. Um, we we know that it's all a big circle. Yeah. <laughs> so we can just keep walking straight to avoid having to pay out urchins unless both board wants. Well, to. it's a it's a circle, but it's a pretty wide circle. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's mm-hmm. a t- the in, you're like the inside of a tire. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I, I think I think we should walk. We should just walk it and sightsee at first, right, to get a feel for the place. And maybe come across uh, a place that we might want because I guess we're pretty well rested, right? The the voyage here was. Yeah, well, beside that last like kind of um, desperate march through the border, uh, the gate town. All right, uh, and and maybe just by walking, we could figure out you know where there's uh, portals that could get us back home, or uh, a place that might look inviting, to, like a tavern or something in this city that we could go inside and get some some more information from, or. Okay, you um, yeah. actually, you see a bunch of taverns in the Foundry District. There's, in fact, an entire row of them. Mm-hmm. But those are most likely going to be workers. Just lots kinda... of workers. Yeah, lots of workers and craftsmen seem to, um, to, to to be out and about here. So the air smells of soot. The air area. smells of soot and fire and uh, charcoal. Um, Terrence, yeah. <clears throat> I have the um, occult skills unlocked the, uh, yeah. there's well because I got a level in uh, psychic ability got, um, there's a gate finder 
um, thing that uses perception and it lets you find soul gates. And soul gates are pretty much equivalent to like the portals. Okay. But they kind of let you know, like, <clears throat> you can detect various alignments when, depending on what your alignment is. The harder, the, the more different the alignment is away from yours, it's a little bit harder to detect. And then uh, you can use, there's like gate finder, which is perception. And then there's gate keeper, which uses a knowledge planes check. Once you're aware of a soul gate, you got a DC 30 knowledge planes check to open it, to know how to open it. Oh, okay. Well, those seem to be very useful skills for the area. Actually, you probably could make some extra money in the city if you actually have both those abilities. Yeah, they're, yes. I mean, it's, okay. it's part of the occult skills unlock. No, oh, okay. Let's see. Um, what was your question, though? <laughs> Sorry. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, be aware that I can actually de um can detect gates. Okay. Well, there's a lot of gates here, and you can see that, like, along the way, you uh, see some gates advertised. You see some people um going into small little businesses or, or stalls. And occasionally you'll see someone like just buying information. Like there seems to be a, a brisk trade in the knowledge about the gates as they move open and close around the city. Uh, let's see, you, you realize pretty quickly that your gate is fairly narrowly defined. You're, you guys are looking for a, a, a very specific patch of the material plane, which is by your own planner knowledge, enormous. Right. Almost infinite. And right, because the material plane encompasses the entire universe. Yes. Of like physical mm -hmm. material. Yeah. <clears throat> every star, every planet. The... So we're gonna have a very difficult time finding our way back home. Yeah. Luckily. <laughs> You're very, it's very rare to find a portal that leads to open void in the on the material plane. Portals tend to crop up around magic, and magic seems to be centered largely on habit, habited planets. So, <laughs> uh, I just wanted you to know that I can do that so that while we're going forward, because I'm, I'm still saying we're going towards the marketplace, okay, that seems to be the better place to go. We'd find more stuff there. All right. Well, if you don't stop the drinking the uh, into the lower ward, then you move into the ladies' ward, which uh, is the larger of the the largest section of the city. This part has um, the more prestigious businesses, lots more temples, lots more wealthy neighborhoods, and of course, lot lot a lot of civic infrastructure. You pass several enormous structures. Um, <laughs> You, your your travels lead you by uh, a park, uh, a, uh, a fenced-in park that is not too far from a massive prison complex that is heavily guarded. There is uh, old towers here, castles and um, palaces, basically everything, everything in every style from every world and storybook you can imagine has been brought here, reproduced here, and a lot of shit you haven't seen before. The By this time, you guys have noticed that there is a specific subset of people that no one molests or talks to in the city. They are strange, robed figures um, with blue skin. They float slightly above the ground, and when they speak to each other, there are they don't make any sound, but pictures appear in the air above their heads. Like uh, complicated pict pict pictographic languages. And they seem to be in charge of like maintaining stuff. You see them repairing roads, uh, patching walls. You see them occasionally uh, tearing down buildings and uh, blocking off streets. Like they're, they're everywhere here in the city. They keep to themselves and everyone leaves them alone. Let's go bother them. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I imagine it's gotta be very difficult to whisper 
when your mm-hmm. whole form of communication is visual language above your head? Um, you're guessing that they they don't really have too much problem. Like you actually, you can figure out what they're saying to each other, but it takes a minute. Like their language is entirely representational. Everything is a picture puzzle. <laughs> Like uh, like those little puzzles on the inside of a Mickey's wide mouth lid. Mm. Yeah, got those. Yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess the only thing I can really think that you guys would like. <laughs> Fascinating. But yeah, you move through the prestigious parts of the city. Like again, here they uh, the you get there are less overtures for your business because you guys are scruffy adventurer types and most everyone here is extremely well dressed as you move into the nobles districts and finally after uh, hours of walking you arrive at the great bazaar uh, a place a marketplace beyond compare beyond your imagination dozens of city block blocks large and that's just where you can tell it is from your your standpoint there are tents stalls little businesses like everything here is portable and t- and like m- mobile but some places look like the tents have been up for a long time like they're pretty well established so basically anything in the multiverse you can think to buy is here somewhere if we don't have a lot had, of loot. Yeah, if only we had a lot of money. Well, yeah. we did. Actually, we have those items that um we kept so we could sell when we got here. Oh, well, yeah. It was those items that were like a couple of firearms, a couple of suits of armor that were going to be well uh, well worth. They were high high amount of money compared to the amount of what we would have got from the captain. And you said you were just going to give us a mount by, yeah, if yeah. we found a place. Yeah, go ahead and make a, I guess, diplomacy or um, what is it? A praise. Give me, give me both. Give somebody, give me a praise. Someone, give me diplomacy. All right. So my diplomacy is plus seven. Is anybody else better at that? I got a plus eight. Okay. Um. So I will roll for diplomacy. I'll assist her then with diplomacy. A praise is minus one for me, so we don't want that. And I got, I I got a plus eleven appraise. I'll assist the appraise. All right. I got a 26. So with the assist, mm-hmm. you did you assist? Yes, 22. I didn't roll so great. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. 22, that was the diplomacy? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. How about the appraise? 26. All right. Okay, so you guys begin moving through the stalls. You find a place where the um, weapons are busily being traded and uh, weapons and armor and things are busily, busily being traded. And after shopping around for a little while, and bargaining pretty hard, you guys come away with um, an additional 8,000 gold from the high quality uh, items, high quality and rare items that you have managed to sneak aboard, sneak into sigil with. Ooh, 8,000 each. No. Oh. <laughs> 2,000 <laughs> each. Uh, okay. I, I know that at some point in time, there'll be four villains here that don't know what to do with all their money. <laughs> and we just take their money. You guys are a little early. <laughs> it's, it's a lot like those old video games where you have your one character, like <laughs> a stash, a stash in the world for your new character to go get. <laughs> or like in Warcraft, you used to just mail stuff. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, I remember how you got my bank all. <laughs> you have to. You, you used to have to do it in EverQuest. Is you like uh, get your items that you want to drop trade to your alt. You have to find like a. A very un untrafficked location in the city. Drop a bag on the ground, <clears throat> log out, re-log back in as the character you want to have it, and hope nobody stole it between then and that. <laughs> oh man, it was shit. That's uh, intense. <laughs> that requires planning. You got to make sure that both your characters are in the same area. Yeah, mm-hmm. you got you to get the one that was receiving in the area you were dropping off. <laughs> But yes. <clears throat> All right, so we got some gold. You got some gold. Yes, I would like to go shopping. 
All right. You go shopping. The market doesn't seem to close, you find. Nice. Right. There's, there's no day and night really here in Sigil so far as like hard, like hard times. Uh, everyone seems to be on their own shift work or their own Aww. schedule. Like some areas, like the light seems to dim sometimes, but it's never terribly consistent. So <laughs> the night, the night market here so far is called the night market because it's mostly dimmer. <laughs> so, quick question trying to track information down from where the, to either seek the portal we're getting out of here or uh, I mean it's going to cost us money or a favor mm. so the, the question here is are we willing to kind of look for work that might because uh, I don't know how much it's going to cost for us to track down our portal to get back out of here so we might need to kind of find a um, what do they call it? People to um, information broker, kind of find an information broker that might be able to get us where we want, but it's probably not going to be cheap. So I don't know if we want to spend all our money right now until we find out what it's going to cost, or are we willing to trade a favor to get that information? Well, go ahead and give me uh, another diplomacy check for gathering information on your own bef- to find out where we need to go or what your options are. Okay. Well, that's not me. What What are you rolling? Diplomacy. Uh, diplomacy. Gather information. Uh, word. Uh, that's better. If somebody wants to... I can give let's... a plus two. All right, also... so that... You also? Give a plus two. All right. So that is a 29, then. All right. Uh, Very motivated. Uh, You find Ryan has quickly insinuated herself into the local gossip scene over the course of your journey in the day. Working that knowledge, nobility. Gossip scene, gossip right. rags, <laughs> and you find out. Yeah, you have basically three avenues to pursue. You can um, basically try to, if you to, to earn money, you can uh, join one of the several mercenary outfits um, here in the city. Uh, they're usually independent and work. Uh, either in and out of the city doing places, uh, doing doing tasks for money. Uh, it is the quickest one to join and probably m- the most steady pay from what you can tell. Option two, if you have money, you can look for an information broker and they will basically use their web of contacts and informants to find what you're looking for as far as the portal you're seeking. And option three, you see... That there is um, a very big pavilion in the in, in the uh, in the market ward where there are young upstart guilds. They call themselves adventuring guilds, but that it looks like they're trying to avoid the stigma of working for the more cutthroat kind of mercenary work. They are looking for people to join in and basically uh, support their network of some of them refer to themselves as heroes, some of them refer to themselves as treasure hunters, some of them refer to themselves as explorers but there's a lot of little bit of little, little, little outfits like that then you're guessing this is probably the, the longest route to take <laughs> That won't, that, but but probably won't leave you destitute by the end. I like not being destitute. Mm-hmm. And I like the idea that they're not just strict mercenaries. Because um, uh-huh. there's a difference between a mercenary that's willing to work for anybody that's willing to pay them. And then there's adventurers. If you're kind of looking at it from a heroic point of view, 
they can actually choose what quest that they would like to take. And I mean, if that's the route we go, that might be a better route. Yeah, I was going to feet. choose option three because you used the word pavilion and it sounded fancy. <laughs> <laughs> in in my mind, mercenaries tend to mean soldiers for hire, like an actual warfare is what my mind thinks of with mercenaries. So it's like, yeah, I don't want to be in somebody else's war. You know, that's how you lose a limb. I like the adventuring treasure hunter kind of vibe more so. So let's let's kind of go over that way and kind of listen in to get a feel for the different groups. And then we'll see which ones we think fit our morals and ethics. All right. Morals and ethics. <laughs> After going over like just the general like vibe of all all around, you seem to you find the three most popular and most probably well established are um, the three guilds that are most well established and have the most representation and probably aren't scams because you're guessing some of them scams. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Uh, the Order of the Sacred Map, which seems to be focused on planar cartography in specific, like they are you're guessing that they're probably the information gathering arm for some other uh, planar organization or maybe just sell what they find to several planar organizations. Uh, the second guild is called the Candle in the Dark, which seems to be focused entirely on altruistic kind of work. They are... Uh, they are... Basically, you can tell just from their bearing how they behave around each other and, of course, the religious symbols that they wear are mostly good-aligned folks uh, that are trying to, 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 to combat evil across the plains the best they can. Monster the hunters. Well, yeah, maybe. Uh, but mostly that they, they appear to be like they're there to, to battle evil in all its forms. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the third one is called the Questman Guild. And the Questman Guild is basically adventurers for hire, but on, um, but they they are they aren't entirely like uh, mercenary. They they vet their their missions. They they tell you they tell you they're not going to send you on anything that is a death sentence. They're not going to send you anything that's going to violate your morals. They are here to make sure the, to match the right team to the right quest hmm. which one of those out of between the candle in the dark and the questman guild seems to have the most like uh monstery hunting extermination kind of vibe to them because that's what i'm drawn to okay that would probably this... be that would probably be the candle in the dark you see you can tell there's a few seasoned monster hunters among them um they are largely a guild with older people involved or or rather extremely much older people or very young people like the 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 the, uh, the uh, where the idealisms are generally the strongest <laughs> like mm -hmm. yeah brian would probably be attracted to that group the more. Questmen seem to have more money on hand, so it looks like they they vet not only for like the appropriate skill or necessary uh, qualifications and whatnot, but it, all, it looks like they might vet for um, quality of treasure as well. the The wealthiest looking of the three is the Order of the Sacred Map, <laughs> which you're guessing are get a lot of outside funding. And that kind of strikes me as a bit of a neutral organization as in they'll sell their information that their adventurers collect to just about anybody um <clears throat> if you ask them about it they tell you that no they ha they they vet who they sell to very quickly and it's very specifically and it's always to uh libraries and other cartography mm -hmm. organizations uh okay. with interest in archiving but that's not really an answer. <laughs> you 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 know right. 
Yeah, libraries doesn't mean the same thing. They 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 seem to be idealistic, but in that very specific kind of bibliophile bibliophilic exploration, like they think this stuff has to be explored and mm -hmm. <laughs> all secrets must be uncovered. All secrets must be known. Um, I know Ryan said basically voiced my same opinion that the candle in the dark kind of fits with us better. Right. So that's two votes for that. But both board and Wraith, what are your thoughts? I can go with either one. I'm kind of leaning more so for the quest guys, but it's whichever. It's decided then. All right. So you're going for the candle in the dark guild? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, wait, wait, wait. Do they have a portfolio of, of accomplished missions that we can flip through to as like a promotional video or some sort of PowerPoint that will tell us you know, more about them as a company? You or have that board, board, right? There are brochures. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> or a bard singing their praise for what but they've yeah, accomplished. More likely, more likely it has somebody like a bard telling tales and singing praises. And if that, that seems to be the pitch. All the pitchmen seem to be very skilled in that direction. I was asking if you personally, Terrence, put together a PowerPoint for each one of these so <laughs> that you can be more informed. I'll get noob working on it. <laughs> Don't. No. <laughs> it would just be a confusion of genital measuring. <laughs> no, so uh, Candle in the Dark. All right. You guys head over to the Candle in the Dark after doing a little bit of shopping around, and they are uh, eager to see you, and you can tell that they have people scoping you guys out as you come to sign up. Um, someone that clearly has the magical abilities, and they're not very shy about it, if they're using a power to detect your alignment, they do not pretend like it's not happening. They uh, they they cast the spell and check you out. The person gives the nod for your group, mm -hmm. and then you are ushered into basically the the sign up area. <laughs> um, I, we, I we stare at them. <laughs> we didn't get the information about how much it might cost <laughs> to find our portal, did we? No, not yet. Hey, well, maybe, you... maybe with them we'll find it. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Once you're once you're there uh, in the in the more uh, secluded area for the people who are interested in joining, you see that you're among about uh, seven or eight other adventurers. Some of them alone, some of them as small groups. A uh, person walks out. This is um, a, a one-legged fellow wearing ceremonial armor. Uh, basically uh, getting around on a pair of crutches. He props himself on his, on his crutches and stands at attention and says, Welcome to the candle in the dark, my friends. Hello. I am Hello. Sir Garrett. <laughs> I am Sir Hello. Garrett. <laughs> I'd give you my uh, the rest of my lineage, but it doesn't really matter much here in the city. I'm not from Sigil, as I imagine many of you aren't. What uh, uh, what race is this guy? What uh, species? He, ap he appears to be human, um, hmm. except except for bo both his eyes are sort of golden orbs. Hmm. Uh, the <laughs> He smiles. You see, he's got a few missing teeth. Uh, kind of a picket fence quality to them. And he's got a thick white beard. He's, he's like, but uh, enough about my lineage. I'm here to induct you into the candle in the dark. We are here to... And he begins to outline their mission statement. They are Oh, there no, to... it's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A 20 year contract. <laughs> he says they are they're there to basically um, seek out injustices across the plains. And if someone comes looking for them, they will do their best to aid them as long as the cause is just. Just they... grab this e meter. What? <laughs> 
Scientology joke. Oh, Jesus Christ. Boo! <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Boo! Sorry. Boo this man. Boo this man. <laughs> Jesus, I didn't realize we had so many Scientology sympathizers in this window. <laughs> One of anyway. us. One of us. Uh, Sir Garrett says uh, we have but one oath here, and that is to do our best to aid the cause of righteousness. I'm not going to ask you to say it out loud. There's no one here that will enforce it except for the person sitting in your seat. We find it. <laughs> we do have one law, however, if you come under, if you come under our banner and begin besper- besperching our name, we will come for you. <laughs> we have nothing but our reputation, and I hope you understand that. So, if you're still interested in joining up, the book is over there. Sign in. <laughs> And uh, we'll get you some accommodations if you need them. Because uh, he looks around, he looks around his eyes settling on you guys. Like I'm getting a strong feeling some of you aren't from around here. On this plane, we're all homeless. <laughs> uh, the people Something like that. Uh, several people get up and uh, head towards the table with the uh, the very large book in it. Uh, a couple people think for a moment and then leave. Uh, what are you guys doing? I guess uh, looking around, taking the feel of the rest of us. We should go sign, sign uh, in, and I was told there'd be concessions. Where's <laughs> <laughs> no my concessions. Sprite and sherbet punch? Nobody said there'd be concessions, but I believed there would be concessions. <laughs> <laughs> I was led to believe by my own thoughts that there would be refreshments. I imagined there would be pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, every business meeting. We've made the decision. Might as well just sign the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And get a place to stay. Okay, uh, you guys sign up, and those of, those who, after everyone has stayed, either left or signed, Sir Garrett says, welcome to the candle in the dark. Um, he reaches, he hobbles over to the table beside the book, and he pulls out a little wooden box, and he uh, says, which of anybody here need accommodations? Can I raise yes. my hand? Mm-hmm. Yes, please. We would. Now, and you and you're not the only ones. Uh, a couple, a few, another group of three also raised their hand. And he says, Whew, "Okay, aha, other hobos." <laughs> <laughs> Stre- stretching the coffers this evening. Uh, Do well, better hobos. <laughs> he, he smiles as he hands out um, a set of keys to each. He's like, it, he he hands out a he has a pile of keys. Like uh, he says, "All right, uh, all right." Who's together with who? I'm on my own. You're on your own. <laughs> Are you not with these people? I mean, I'm with them, but I would really, really, really <laughs> just like one night on my own. Oh, no. no, no. We don't do bunks. We got, we actually have accommodations <laughs> for everyone. Excellent. We, uh, <laughs> now I can't, I can't claim, claim they're super glorious or anything, but there are enough rooms in any given location. So he pulls out a smaller book and begins thumbing through it and says, ah, here you go. And he pulls out a key ring and hands it to you since you're the one that brought it up, uh, Ryan. Does it have a bath? Uh, there is a, com- there is a bath house down the street from this one, I believe you can use. Good enough. Um, this building is a small one, and it's luckily for you, <laughs> not in a terribly bad district. <laughs> ah, he I says, imagine terribly bad districts will, are where we're going to end up <laughs> more often than not. That is who needs the light the most. Yes? You know, you're not wrong, and I respect you for understanding. But you're going to have to double back through the city. Uh, you'll be staying in the lower ward, probably on the edge of the hive. 
Okay. Um, mm, the, the neighborhood grade. doesn't look that bad as long as you go when it's dark and you can't see the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> the gray district. You'll be oh, you'll be over near the mortuary, but it's pretty close to central. Um, I hope you don't mind the smell of smoke. <laughs> Some mortuary that cuts corners, huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, Hope no, no. likes barbecue. Oh. It's in the lower ward, so there's the smell of smoke almost everywhere. <laughs> but <clears throat> this is a um, this is a very secure location. It's got iron iron shod windows and a very sturdy door. Here you go. Ah, Shit. like my apartment minus the that, sturdy door. It has six uh, rooms, and we may send a couple of extra as we get them. Be on the lookout for that, but don't worry. <laughs> We will send a someone with one of our uh, one of our tabards to know that they are on the up and up. It's like a fantasy Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> so, do, will we be getting tabards, or will we just be getting like little little sigil things that we pin on copes or something like that? He's like the choice is yours. We have both. <clears throat> I'll take a sigil thing, a All pin. Right. Absolutely. Sometimes you don't want to go barging in with your colors flying. I'll wear a uh, tabard. Oh, very well. <laughs> I'll take a sigil. You'll want to splash a color where you're staying. Uh, <laughs> What's the tabard made out of? Could it also double as a nice warm cloak for an old man? <laughs> well, let's see. We have we have we only really have tabards in um big folk sizes, but it would basically become a robe if you built it in the right place. I'll take a sigil. Okay. <laughs> it's like good uh, man. What is what is the tabard the, the emblem? Um it is a basically candle a candle in the dark. It is basically a candle uh <laughs> with uh rays shining out of the top on a circular black field. It's a man walking down a beach, but there are two <laughs> sets of footprints behind. <laughs> but where the beach gets rough, there's only one set. Oh. He 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 says, "Now uh, I'll have one of our folks guide you there. If you, um, since I, you're, you're new to the city, aren't you? Just arrived today. Ah, well, we caught you early. Good. This place can." wear you down. Be careful of that. I do feel in the uh, spirit of uh, transparency that we should tell you that it's, we're mainly focused on finding a portal home. Ah. Well, we're always interested in having members um, on a permanently stationed on other planes, if that's something you're interested in doing. Does, is your world... Uh, particularly uh, filled with evil. <laughs> we were in the process of tracking down people who destroyed a village. Mm. Well, sounds good enough to me. We'll do everything we can to help you find your way home. Um, quick question. Um, since we're new to this city, do y'all have some kind of like a primer on welcome to Sigil? Here's what you need to know. So you don't look like a rube for, Sigil for rubes. <laughs> he <a> says, <laughs> I'll, I'll send one of the local rounds, the locals round, one of our locals round to give you the heads up on things. Very much appreciated. <clears throat> All right. He, Does the uh, tabard, <clears throat> quick question, this yeah. tabard, um, have you noticed any trend toward wearers of your sigil being attacked in the streets or taken advantage of perhaps a smaller symbol of our allegiances would be more beneficial since I oh, would be the only one don't wearing it. back down now. <laughs> the the tabard looks so well on your shoulder. <laughs> of course it does. Everything I wear looks good. Uh, the tabard, the tabard as you're holding it is uh, black and gold in color and um, he says, well, there are places you probably shouldn't wear it, but they are very obvious as to who they are. However, this city is so filled with guilds, groups, uh, businesses, and whatnot. 
it's difficult to tell an adventurer from a delivery boy anymore. Hmm. Why does was, that look like a, when you look at the symbol, it looks like a target with an arrow <laughs> stuck into it, like the ray of lights, an arrow being stuck <laughs> into this target. Hmm. hmm. That's kind of convincing. I'd never noticed that before, he says, with a, <laughs> an unconvincing voice. <laughs> I do like the color scheme, though. Black and gold is is nice. That's a good color. And stay away from that other tavern called a bonfire in the daytime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So, Did you say the- barn fire or bonfire? Bonfire. Okay. Because so I was like, barn fire? That is one. It makes sense. Yeah. That- Sorry, my brain is. Yes, we need all that marinade. <laughs> all that wet day meat. marinated chicken. You've got botulism in the brain. <laughs> um, <coughs> sorry. So yes, after the after you guys get your tabards, your your badges, and the keys, of course, he tells you to wait while he goes and finds someone to, to take you along. At but before that, he sets up the other group with their dwelling. Oh, they're not staying with us. Uh, no, there are three of them, and there's only two extra rooms. Now they can. He asked them if any are willing to double up, and they say yes. So that would really be up to you if you want a second smaller adventure group living next with you guys. They're they're more than happy to share. Doesn't bother me. Very well. I mean, is this, a, this uh, is a temporary residence for us then? Yes, it's uh, mostly there, so you can um, settle in, get what, learn what you can. We'll learn more about you and set you up for some missions. Just so y'all definitely. know, I don't wear clothes on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely an Airbnb, not an extended stay. <laughs> yeah, he says, uh, ideally, you're going to be off uh, out of the city pretty soon. Mm. <laughs> Um, so yes, the you and the other three adventurers basically are guided back across the city by one of the one of the candle in the darks members. Um, you get a pretty solid primer into the city. They give you some of the common lingo here that seems to have its own lingo, and uh, I didn't really have a chance to bone up on it, or otherwise I'd be using it a little bit more heavily. But <laughs> bone. <laughs> by the time you guys get through back through the city it is um you're pretty tired like it's been a long day of walking uh, from the the time you stepped off the boat till you get to this um narrow three-story building he says that it has six bedrooms but you see that it has a few other rooms it has a common room it has a kitchen um there is some associated plumbing for the restroom. They tell you that uh, not every building in the city has it, so just feel lucky you don't have to go scraping around for a public outhouse. We have a luxury. Yes, running water. Is it hot water? Can we get hot uh, water in the bath? Oh, uh, wait, it's no. a bathhouse. <laughs> no, it is not a bathhouse. There's a bathhouse near, near not far from there. They tell you, um, no, there's no running water. You're going to have to throw your slops. You're going to have to wash your slops down with a bucket of uh, with a bucket of water. And but there's a well nearby. And it, well, so somebody's going to have to go collect water in the morning. Yeah, right? we can generate water, uh, or however you want to do it. They tell you the the hard and fast rules of the city. One, do not disturb the daubus. And he pointed them out on the way, the strange robed figures that are doing the um, doing the repairs around the city. You can ask them questions, you can talk to them, you can interact with them, but for the love of Pete, do not do, not do anything uh, that could be construed as an attack on them. It won't go well for you. Uh, two, uh, if you see the Lady of Pain, <laughs> and if, any, if anyone needs that explained, he will. <laughs> Run! If you see the Lady of Pain, mm-hmm. avoid. Again, she has uh, no aura to speak of as far as telling what her morality is. So we don't know exactly what side she's on in the cosmic balance, but we do know that she has 
godlike powers here in the city and will banish you or just make you sprout in enough wounds that kill you, depending on her mood. She is ultimately the ruler of the city. Ruler of the city. She appears at random. Like, random. She occasionally makes decrees. <laughs> Again, avoid. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the likelihood of the Lady of Pain showing up in, say, our domicile? In your domicile, <laughs> low. She okay, is, good. There isn't, a, there isn't a street in the city she hasn't been spotted on at least once, though. Is there a place where the rules, like, are there any rules that we should know about that we might inadvertently break? That depends on where you are in the city. Like, <laughs> is there a, cl- a clockwork device that sings out the, the rules of of sigil, very similar to Dulan, Dulop, uh, Shrek? Unfortunately, no, and largely it depends on how close the city, uh, the city watch is to you as far as crimes and things like that? Well, I mean, you know, not not obvious crimes, just things that that we may not... Are there any, like, just odd rules he that we should know about? When yeah, someone no was talking. spitting on the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no singing before 6 a.m. I mean, you know, um, things like that. <laughs> again, most of those rules are confined to the buildings that uh, people are in habits, so but on the streets, it's basically a street. It's a city. It behaves like a city. It moves. It breathes like a city. Okay. Try to think like a person that lives in a city. New York. Mm. Never heard of it. He says, but I'm sure you're probably right. Yeah. He, um, he says, uh, I we're kind of a poor guild, so we don't really keep a lot of food on hand on our properties. There might be some dried beans in a in a pot somewhere if you need to cook something tonight. However, you're probably gonna have to go out looking for food to bring back here to stock it up. Uh, we're in the market. I would no, you're not in the market. <laughs> oh, I thought this was in the market area. No, you walked way back across the city toward the uh, the lower ward. Yeah, basically where we started. You're back almost where you started. <laughs> oh, I thought we were still yeah. talking to him. Yeah, no, this is the person that, that takes, you, takes, takes you there. Oh, Boy, I wish that had been mentioned before we left the market. No, no, he was telling you this. He's telling you this shit on the way. So if you need to stop, oh, him, yeah. You can't, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll get some rice and some beans and some lizard carcasses. He says, um, we have a meeting every three days at our central guild hall that we have, and we will send a carriage around to collect the seven of you. Um, it's just it beats it beats basically trying to find everyone that's why we put them up if we can otherwise who knows where people end up (laughs) in the gutter and so the person after you guys get back there settle in the place is pretty bare bones roomy but not 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 exactly exciting the the most exciting thing you saw on the way is the um is the mortuary, a massive, strange edifice that seems to be surrounded by like lean-tos and shacks and things like that, but that's only on the inside of the building. It it looks like there is a a whole subculture of drab, gray-faced people that live around the mortuary. And people still bring dead bodies and things on carts there too to the mortuary where they um, process them uh, and prepare them for the afterlife. But it, it looks like the the place is run by a cult, <laughs> for lack of a better word. <laughs> Your guide tells you that those, those used to be the Dustmen, one of the factions that ruled the city. But after the uh, Lady of Pain banned all the factions after that big war they had a while back, they never actually left. They just kept doing the job because they like it, I guess. <laughs> but if you die in sigil, chances are they're going to get their hands on you eventually. That's ominous sounding. <laughs> when can we expect our first job? <laughs> he says, "Give us a few days. We're still doing. We're still in an active recruiting phase, and we want to make sure we get at least two more days under our belt." 
you will be doling out jobs or offering them in three days when we pick you up. And so from that, he vanishes out the door and we into the city. Uh, <laughs> leaving you and the other, uh, other small group of adventurers there to settle in, pick rooms, and prepare whatever meals you guys bought. And um, we'll pick up from there three days later. And play some icebreaker games. Oh, yeah. So then. Uh, <laughs> no. You Trust find, fall. You find a strange uh, beige looking box on a disused shelf. Scrawled on top is the, the, the word munchkin. And uh, underneath, do not play. <laughs> oh, that just automatically draws me in. <laughs> Oh, I lied. I, I do want to socialize. Let's play this beautiful game. It is a game where you have to, uh, via collecting the collecting and trading of cards, accrue mm -hmm. the largest number of halflings to be the winner. Uh, <laughs> kind oh, of racist. A, it's a slavery game. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't like that game. <laughs> <laughs> no rules against cheating, though. So, you know, you can count yourself if you're a halfling. <laughs> I still don't like that game. <laughs> <laughs> There's very problematic connotations to that. Let's see how good of friends we all are. Let's play Munchkin and see if we still talk <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Scott was telling like one of the customers about the loudest game ever played at his store, and he, he claims it is us playing Munchkin. <laughs> <laughs> well, duh. Kevin was well. at the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just by virtue of decibel like, usage alone yeah. i have a hard time believing that because as many games they've had people there playing uh magic the gathering oh yeah well magic the gathering is always a dull roar because there's so many people playing it when they have events but like yeah. we're we're on a quiet wednesday game. yeah we're also in the back next to the bathroom well. <laughs> He claimed he could hear us out front. Yeah. Kevin's at that uh, table. Yeah. And he gets very excited during Games of Munchkin, as we all do. I don't. I I, I don't. I'm very I, calm. Oh, I shut up, Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> your, your excitement we'll about is capital. It. You taste it. <laughs> you vibrate with energy. <laughs> it, well, that's true. I, I kick over the door. Keep... You're like, calm down, <laughs> Jeff. We have to say this every turn. <laughs> All right, Kevin, what are you? Oh, kick over the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was pretty good, Kevin. <laughs> you just missed the ah uh, part before. <laughs> I pushed a button. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a plus five. All right. Um, anyway, so yeah, next time, uh, I swear, actual adventure. <laughs> This was really adventurous. We sight saw, we signed up for a guild, we got a place to sleep. Well, we had to set it up so for the next part of it, because I mean, we could mindlessly kept going around sigil doing crap. Doing crap until you got in trouble. Yeah. Well, I was waiting for one of those uh, side adventures to kick off where a random NPC walks up and goes, you look like hardy adventurous. <laughs> My wife's family sword was stolen by a bunch of planar ogres. Well, I was waiting for that, too. I was waiting for as we went around the city, half the city, I was waiting. It's like, this is the perfect time for him to just have someone, hey, y'all look like perfectly good people. Go, I need y'all's help. Never happened. Then we get around to the marketplace. And it's like, yeah, man. Okay, this is left to us. <laughs> how many times I've wandered around cities and nobody's ever once asked me for an adventure every time I've wandered every around the time, city yeah. <laughs> uh, except for that devil I met go to Atlanta <laughs> and walk from one end, uh, one street to the next and they'll go hey can I have a cigarette and I go you can if you do this adventure for me no, no, no. <laughs> I, don't want I must accomplish I these three tasks <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to give out quests <laughs> I want to be asked on a quest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make everything a quest if someone asks me questions. Yeah. <laughs> Just answer cigarette. these riddles. Well, three. absolutely. Yeah. But you need to do these three things first. 
But first, I need you to decipher this treasure map. <laughs> I do the Why shitty. Should he... I do the shitty Bilbo. You know, like what's in my pocket? They're like, "Can I get a cigarette?" And I'm like, "Sure, you can." What's my name? <laughs> and if it's you... the simplest name on the planet to know, and nobody's um... ever gotten it. I think the next time somebody comes up and asks me for some spare change, I'll be like, mm-hmm. first, I need mm-hmm. you to raid the graveyard and destroy the undead that are crawling from the ground. My basement is filled with rats. You see? There it is. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, that's easily a fifth level quest Franks has given him. He just skipped right over the rats are in my basement well, quest. Franks could also, that's actually a good one where he's like, they, they're asking for money. You go, only if you can tell me how much exactly I have in my pocket right this second. Oh, let's like, let's make pockets. a deal. <laughs> just, uh, just... I, I, I like to prompt somebody to go into an extremely dangerous <laughs> situation. <laughs> I need you to go wedgie that cop, and then I'll give you a. <laughs> <laughs> well, the price a... of one small misdemeanor. <laughs> <laughs> I feel real bad if I got someone killed over a cigarette, especially since I don't smoke. <laughs> well, <laughs> you will get, I will give you free room and board. And, and if you no. do this one thing, no, and that is go pickpocket that police officer over there. No, that's just <laughs> evil, Jeff. I need, no, I need tell a can somebody, of face for these bland fries. I have a family heirloom that's locked up in the mausoleum. I need you to look for the name Henderson, break in there, and bring me what you find. <laughs> uh. I, I guess I just really want somebody to break into a graveyard for some reason. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's yeah. Every, all of your quest from all. Yeah, of I just realized that. Thing. I need the ashes of my forefathers. So, guys, we're opening up a new restaurant. What should our theme be? A mausoleum. Involved <laughs> breaking into a graveyard to get a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a pretty cool gimmick, actually. You have to Where go you get through the a haunted from? house. It have to be a really good pizza. Uh, the also, the did. mausoleum. Oh, a really tombstone good pizza. Yeah, uh, you just, we just sell tombstones. <laughs> it's not delivery. It's the undead. <laughs> You're telling me I went through this whole haunted house for a fucking <laughs> oven cooked pizza? A tombstone? It's the gimmick, oh, man. God, you saw it. The stuffed that. crust? What are you crying about? <laughs> yeah. The stuffed crust is the worst. It is this, the worst. This girl that we worked with, she she had she was having her birthday party. And we all knew because she wouldn't shut up about how she was gonna have to throw on herself this birthday party to the point where she made these really looking awesome looking invitations. And you know, um she's all dressed up like a fucking princess and shit like she's 10 but she's you know <laughs> old enough to be a bartender at a, at a bar that I work at worked at Ooh, I, so we show up thinking that this birthday party is gonna be like you know the house is gonna be it's gonna be like walking into a whole magical world nope <laughs> it was a whole magical world <laughs> I think I've told this story sure. on here before she had one fucking Tostino's pizza <laughs> like that was the food I was so mad. <laughs> Spent all their budget on costuming. I was like, just let me know to eat beforehand. You said there'd be food here, not your leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> there will be food at my party. Who no splits the Tostinos? Not me. <laughs> is that my pizza? Or is this for everybody? Because if it's for everybody, yeah. I'm not eating any of it. That's just yeah, a tease. If your whole pizza can fit on a single plate. Yeah. Why did why did Totino's go into that weird rectangular shape? It's upsetting. No, I'm very mad upsetting. about it. <laughs> like I like it where the cheese pools in the middle of one of those pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good for that pooling. No. <laughs> also have something to mop it up with. I used to have the perfect cast iron recipe for a Tostitos pizza which I was forced to come up with because my oven broke and I didn't have the money to get a new oven. <laughs> and uh, I do not own a fucking rectangle cast iron <laughs> for when the oven breaks again. 
This is just a, a blatant attempt to sell to- toaster ovens. That's what this is. This is the I was going to say they did it for the people who are uh, oven poor but toaster oven rich. <laughs> <laughs> they just fucked ah. over all of the people who are oven poor, period. <laughs> <laughs> uh, college students. They have a toaster oven in their dorm. Do they? Uh, that's what a microwave's for. Uh, yeah. oh, if I have to have choose microwave. which one I have, it's going to be a toaster oven. Oh, yeah. Like, microwave just does not make good food. Yeah, then you have to roll that Tostinos up and <laughs> pretend it's a <laughs> shitty burrito. Yep. <laughs> I will say, though, you can't pop Rubbery. popcorn in a toaster oven. I'm sure you can find a way. It catches the bag on fire. Yeah, but you also can't go buy see, an already yeah. cooked Tostinos pizza at a gas station. You can get a bag of popcorn that's already made. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But then, I mean, if you want to find, like, you could find a way, like, you get yourself one of those little pie tins and you put your, put your shit in there and whatever, you know, your popcorn (laughs) in there and you just watch it and make sure it doesn't burn. Mm. See, I, I like popcorn because I throw it in the microwave, press the buttons, go take a leak, come back, and it's ready. That's. Lazy, for, yes. For you, I can completely understand it, Mister. <laughs> trying to kill yourself and others oh, by he, marinating. He, he, you know, he's got, yeah, he's got to marinate it first. Others, I don't cook for people. This is no, just for my did. own. We watched you make deviled eggs at my house. <laughs> yeah, the, that was the last time I made food for another human being. <laughs> it like it was the first time you had made food for another human being. <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> I had been out of practice ever since I left the restaurant business. <laughs> Oh, oh that's scary thought. Mm-hmm. Frank's like, you know, he likes to save uh, time for breakfast. He just stores raw eggs and meat in his mouth in the morning time and he just <laughs> puts them right in to the frying pan real quick. No, no, no. He doesn't have to bring in the frying pan. At, uh, at a perfect uh, 96.8 <laughs> degrees, which is the inside of my mouth, an egg is cooked enough to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Only if I sleep with it in my mouth first. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, that makes that's sense. what we're talking about. Breathe through your nose. <laughs> Deep pap and eggs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a really weird Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> Blowing huge egg bubbles out of his nostril. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we did it. All right. Yes. Episode 101. We got back to gross. Back. We're in the good books now. <laughs> Finish the show off. Hey, bye. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>